All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about what I would consider the five simple properties or priorities to what makes a really good survival knife, especially for Alaska, but also for other places as well. So this is going to be going over the general characteristics of what I look for in a survival knife when I think of, you know, the picking up a survival knife, like what do I think um, are going to make good attributes and properties to a survival knife? So for me, this is the basic kind of unit of measure. And I think this is important because I use a wide variety of knives on the channel. Some, you know, arguably better for survival than others. You know, of course I'm showing the Cold Steel SRK and CPM 3V, but one of my go-to survival knives is one that I think is very atypical for a lot of, um, at least people in conventional mindsets. And this is the um, Chris Reeve knives Pacific here. So, you know, a lot of um, variables can exist in a knife and it still perform well. Things like um, blade steel, things like grind choice, things such as, you know, blade length and corrosion resistance. There's a lot of things that are kind of arbitrary to survival. And of course, having a steel that's more corrosion resistant is always nice, but not necessary. And so I've kind of boiled it down to what are the five things that when I look at any survival knife, whether it's a Cold Steel SRK, whether it's, you know, a Bark River Knives Cub, whether it's like any of the knives on this channel that I've showcased for survival, um, these are kind of the standard of things that I look for, like my units of measure. So first off, the big one for me is going to be so first off the big two for me are going to be one a full tang and two a minimum of five and a half inches for blade length so first off when i said full tang and i put little air quotes or asterisk or on it you know essentially what i mean by that is of course you can see this um, cold steel srk is not a full tang in the traditional sense of a full tang knife but when i look at it um, i'm looking for things that are going to be either full tang or near full tang so this essentially has a full tang to it but it's fully rubberized um, other good examples of this would be things like e scrapyard knife co um, ws 1021 here once again fully rubberized or handle but it still has a near full tang there are other knives of course in the existence on the channel and um, that i've showcased before and that just exist in the world that have this property as well so this is not an exposed tang and even if they do have exposed tangs something similar to the demco knives free reign here that you guys can see little tang sticking out the back um, other knives like that are like the mora garberg um, in the falkneven series of knives as well also have a little bit of a tang sticking out so when i look for knives i look for something that is full tang or near full tang and that is primarily due to the fact that by and large typically speaking these are going to be more more durable knives. Now I will get into a video of kind of misconceptions of survival knives and I feel like full tangs are not necessarily um, always necessary for a lot of practical purposes but having a near full tang or full tang knife will give you it should at least give you added durability. That is the first one that I look for on the list. Now, the next one, like I said, is going to be a minimum of five and a half inches of blade length. And this primarily goes back to what are we using a survival knife for? For me, typically speaking, I use survival knives for um, shelter building, fire building, and those types of more industrial tasks require you to use your knives in more industrial ways. And so the same way, or for the same reason that we want strength in a knife, you know, you want a knife that can take a beating, you also want a knife that can span pieces of wood. So once again, the Cold Steel SRK is about a six inch blade length here. And what that gives you in property is that you can lay this on, you know, a decently sized piece of wood and still smack it through. And when you're smacking the knife through a piece of wood, you still have a good amount of portion of, you know, tip area that you can hit and help force the knife through the material, right? So that is why we want to gravitate towards these large larger survival knives and um, even knives like the GSO 5.1 here. This is a roughly speaking five inch um, <clears throat> blade here. And so 
This is a little bit smaller than I would prefer, but you can see, and as I've talked about in previous videos, that the actual blade stock itself, so from tip to handle, is close to, I wanna say it's close to about six inches. So when you're actually functionally batoning with this knife or you know pounding this through wood, you have that much you know room to work with as opposed to the actual cutting edge. So the cutting edge is shorter than what I would prefer, but the actual blade length itself is decent. And so that's what I look for or kind of as a minimum category to help narrow me down because you know if we just look at any knife such as this Mora 511 you know this can do a lot of the types of you know batoning tasks that you would call this to do but at the end of the day this 511 isn't going to be able to sp uh, span pieces of wood large enough to realistically build shelters and it may not be large enough to span wood that you're going to want to process for fire building. So you guys can see there kind of the size difference there uh, for length. Now one key notable feature that I skipped over here and I intentionally skipped over was blade thickness. So blade thickness, is there a small end that I look for on blade thickness. For me, not necessarily. I would say that I feel comfortable in survival situations with knives that are an eighth of an inch thick. I feel comfortable with knives, so long as they're well built, with knives that have, you know, around a tenth of an inch thick um, blade. Once again, it's less about the thickness, and to a degree, obviously, the thicker the blade, the um, better that's going to do about or it's the better it's going to do when splitting apart pieces of wood of course but the most key feature here isn't so much um, how well it splits because sometimes you want a good knife that is going to really feather stick right so you know having a knife that's super thick super robust and burly is going to be admirable but you don't really need it i've once again used everything from eighth of an inch thick down to tenth of an inch thick um, all the way up to a quarter inch thick and you can do a lot of the same tasks granted the tenth of an inch thick as opposed to the quarter inch might take you you know four or five hits more to get through the same piece of wood so are you going to use a little bit more energy yes but it's not going to be something that the knife can't do right so next to that for me is something that are heavy preferences. So the next three are things that are not necessarily critical for the survival of the knife, so long as it's well built. Um, but these are things that I really do look for in a survival knife. So the first one for me is 90 degree spines. Once again, starting fires with a ferrocerium rod is not the only way to start fires. You can use matches, you can use lighters, you can use the sun, you can use you know um, Fresnel lenses with the sunlight. So there are certainly other ways to start fires but one of the chief ways of starting fires realistically is with ferrocerium rods and so having a spine on a knife that is going to you know be sharp and to going to strike is very important for me so most of my frontline survival knives do have the ability to have sharpened spines to strike ferrocerium rods now once again is this exactly a <clears throat> deal breaker for me it depends once again if it's a frontline survival knife it is a deal breaker so all all of my frontline survival knives must be sharpened so that they can strike ferro rods, but isn't necessarily the end of the world if it's not. Once again, there are plenty of other ways to strike a ferro rod. There are also other ways to start fires. Next one up for me, and this is another one that once again, heavy preference, but not always, um, is rubberized handles. You will notice once again on a lot of my knives here, things like the SRK, things like the Free Rain, things like the um, WS1021, things like many of the Mora, like the Mora Pathfinder, are going to have rubberized handles. And I like rubberized handles for a handful of reasons. First off, they are super grippy, super tacky, and they give you just a tremendous amount of grip and confidence in holding that knife. Even if your hands are sweaty, they're wet, they're bloody, um, you can still get a really good, really positive traction. And of course, as I've said at nauseum, of course, in colder climates, they're going to remain more temperature neutral. So it gives you something that's more comfortable to hold on to for a prolonged period of time if that is what you need. Now once again this doesn't mean that an exposed full tang is a bad knife, it just means that this handle is going to be very cold as opposed to a rubber handled knife. So those are things that I definitely look for in a knife. Now the last one for me, once again, not necessarily a make or break, is going to be what I call a good steel. Now a good steel probably is going to make a lot of my comment section warriors very happy because you know they're like, oh, what does this mean? And for me, once again, steel is kind of an arbitrary point because I've 
done survival tasks, bushcrafting tasks with everything from, you know, 1095 and 420 HC all the way up to Magna Cut, right? Like I've used a wide variety of both super steels, you know, powder metaled steels, all the way down to low basic carbon steels, okay? And basic stainless, like 420 is basic stainless steel, right? So I've used, you know, all of the spectrums and uh, things in between, right? ABL, 14C, 28N. Um, I've used lots of different things in between. Um, and so realistically, you can use a wide variety of steels. However, once again, in my findings, what I try to aim for are steels that have good shock resistance, good durability. So once again, your edge isn't going to chip out. It's not going to crack. It's not going to break. It's not going to fracture. Um, other things you're going to want to look at are if you can high corrosion resistance high edge retention once again edge retention isn't necessarily the end all to beat all but it's high edge retention high corrosion resistance are niceties to have it's nice to not have to worry about your blade rusting so anyways guys this has been the five core principles like the simple principles that i look for once again you know grinds will vary per knife you know some have saber grinds some have scandy grinds some have convex grinds some have different blade shapes like different tip shapes i don't find those to be as important or as deciding a factor in selecting a survival knife as much as i do these five properties and these are genuinely what i look for in a survival knife when i'm like i'm thinking about like do i want to buy this knife for survival or do I not? So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm